So um, what we did in uh, Kigali was to really try and understand the existing bus network and how it operates. So five years before we got involved, the government had implemented a first generation contract. So they had taken the minibuses and the informal buses and you know, very much an, a kind of typical transport mix that you'd find in an African city. And they had um, eliminated largely the informality in the system, the small vehicle sizes, and had uh, given contracts or, or awarded contracts to collectives that then used those contracts to buy bigger buses and ran much bigger fleets than you see in a typical African city. So if you go to Kigali, you see 50-seaters, 70-seaters. The smallest vehicle size you'll see is a 28-seater called a, a Toyota Coaster. Um, and so the 13-seat minibus um, has been pushed to the periphery of the city. It happens kind of outside of the main city. It's more in, in villages and, and in rural um, Rwanda that you find minibuses still today. Um, and in, within the city, you either get around by motorbike taxi or by bus, or a very small percentage gets by on private vehicle uh, cars. Um, so we set out to measure that bus network that had been established. Um, so it was, it was five years old. Um, so the fleet was coming towards like the middle of its life. Um, you'd say the, the end of its first maintenance cycle and the, the start of its um, next life as a, as a refurbished fleet. So our job was to um, really collect data on the ridership and on the behaviors route by route. So we uh, mapped and we had a little Android app that we built called Gametra Pro that allows us to track the vehicle through the app. The number of passengers getting on and off gets recorded in the app. And every time the vehicle stops, um, we record what, what it's doing. And then the vehicle runs and we record everything at the end. And then when the vehicle returns, we record that trip and when it goes back, we record that trip. So at the end of the day, you have this data set of this vehicle went back and forward, back and forward. And then when you replay the data, you can see how many kilometers that vehicle did. You can see how many passengers were in that vehicle. You can see when did it park on the side of the road and not move? When did it move? When was it stuck in traffic? When was it in free flow? Where did the driver drive? Did he choose a different route because there was traffic in front of him? So you get this, I call it a fingerprint of how this vehicle operates. And we collect so many vehicle fingerprints that when you start laying them on top of each other, you start understanding the metrics and the hard numbers, the kilometers a vehicle does, the revenue it collects, the, the uptime, the downtime, all those sort of things. You also then, when you zoom out, you start to get a very clear picture of how the network is operating, how the road functions, where the road like congestion points are where the vehicle gets stuck, at what time it gets stuck. And suddenly you can kind of start answering questions about the vehicle and its optimization, the network and its optimization. And then by solving those two, what's the improvement for the rider? Can he get shorter trips, cheaper trips? Uh, and is there a way that you can recompose this network? So um, I call it, we, 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 we measure the demand and we measure the supply in a network at, a, at an unprecedented scale. And then we unzip the demand from the supply. We look at the demand on its own and we see what does that demand actually need. We look at the supply on its own and we see where is the supply inefficient. And then we bring those two back together and you have what we call a redesign. So we say, all right, so if we change these operations this way, you'll get a better uh, revenue per kilometer or you'll get a better uh, passenger per kilometer number. So you'll increase the efficiencies. But if you change the operations in the passengers, we'll get a better service, a shorter trip, less transfers, or all, all, all sorts of uh, things like that. So um, the, the data really powers the answering of thousands of questions. You know, so when we sit with the route information, uh, that route has probably 20 dynamics that you can change. You can change the size of the, the bus. You can change how many buses you put on. You can change the frequency that the buses go. You can change, do, like for instance, one bus stops at every stop, the next bus only stops at express stops. So there's a million things that you can change and you can really design the right plan for that trip, that route. So we redesigned uh, 450 buses in that fleet and 55 routes. Like one by one, each route was profiled and each route was optimized. And then across the network, 
of 55 routes, 450 buses, um, we, we, we were able to um, help redesign the, the way that the contracts are, are allotted and really pave the way for a, a more smarter contracting uh, approach. So um, you, the use of fleet management, the use of telematics, GPS, um, the implementation of electronic fare payments, all of this becomes kind of feasible and possible um, off the back of really good quality data and uh, planning that's appropriate for the city. And I think that's kind of the biggest um, input or the legacy kind of, yeah, that, that, that comes out of this project is the original thesis five years ago was we need better data to improve the way we plan public transport. But the learning I've had is that once you collect public, like enough data that you can see what's going on, there's no other way to plan public transport anymore. You can't go back to the old habits from the 60s and 70s that is the way that we're planning public transport. The proliferation of data and this new data source means that you, 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 you have to plan uh, with a data-driven approach.